so for this week's home learning session, you're going to be using your new sketchbook. Everything that you do in our lessons will need to go inside here, but for your first one, we're gonna get a little bit messy. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to take three pages from your book and rip them out nice and gently. Woo! And then what I would like you to do is you are going to use this paper and you are going to tear it in half as best you can. You can fold and then roughly rip. Don't worry too much about this paper because what we're gonna do doing with these is using your all your things in your resource pack to make lots of lovely collage material. So once you have ripped out your three pages from your sketchbook, and rip them in half, you will now have six lovely pieces of paper to work with. Now, you should have some paint. If you picked it up from school, you've got this one, uh, or you can use anything you have at home. Um, and I would love for you to use all of your oil pastels. Yours are all sparkly and new, whereas mine have been used for quite a lot. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a mess on each sheet. Now, first of all, I'd like you to use a dry material. So these ones are obviously dry and these are very wet. So I would like you to think about texture, pattern, and also just take your hands for a lovely art walk. You can make lots of marks, go off of the page, which is why I'm using this lovely protective surface. So make sure you protect your space underneath. And this time I'm just gonna go for squiggles. This actually is now reminding me of grass. So each, each piece of paper, you can theme it if you like. If you'd like one to be air, fire, you can choose. Or maybe you'd like to think about your colors. You can have complementary colors. I wonder if you can remember those. Or you can have hot or cold. It's completely up to you. I wonder if you know what colors I'm using here. So these are your dry materials. Try not to over egg it. And then what I'd like you to do, once you've done this, I'm gonna ask you to use your paint. Now, you're gonna need to use some water with your paint because it is ready mix. Now, if you don't use water, it can be quite thick. So you can choose how you'd like to use your paint. And of course, you can use your lid that your paint came in to mix as well so you can use the lid to mix so what i want you to do is you can aha there's my lovely water so you can start to paint if you want it to be thinner just add a little bit more water and it becomes like a wash so think about the different consistencies that's the different thicknesses of a liquid, what consistency you would like it to be. Now, as you can see, because we're using oil pastels, it still manages to come through. Now, this paint dries very quickly. Now, if you would like to, you can also experiment with making marks into your paint as well, just like that. Now, uh-oh! I've just put a dirty brush into my paint. Make sure that you are washing and drying your paint brush before dipping it into your paint because we want to be able to use our paint palette again. So you can mix your colours, remember your lovely colour mixing, and make sure you paint all the way to the edges, which means you're probably going to need to get your hands messy! Achoo! Oh my god! Goodness, the mess made me sneeze. And then you can work into it as well with your oil pastels over the top if you would like to. And then set that one aside to dry. Wash your brush and have another go. Think about something you haven't done yet. So what I've actually done is I've gone and got some pegs from the garden and I have gone around and I've found some bits of rubbish from around my house as well. So what you can do to make other paint brushes instead, you can peg on some different materials. So now I'm gonna have a go at using my dry material first 
to make pattern and texture and line and also don't forget shape. You know what I'm talking about. It is the elephants of art. The elements of art. I wonder if you could remember all seven. Hmm. So I'm making lots of pattern here. This time I'm going to actually use the side of my pastel to make it some different textures there. So I've got my hand made paintbrush here. I mean, it looks a bit funny. And I'm going to stick it into here and I'm going to see what happens. Oh, look at that lovely, lovely texture. You might need to peg it on a little bit more. Go all the way to the edge, see what happens. Can you paint with it, dab with it? You can then, of course, use your paintbrush as well to go into it as well. Use all of the resources that you have to get a little bit messy. Woo! You can flick your paint. I wonder if you know how to make orange paint using the paints that you have got from your resource pack. I'm sure you know. So we take a little scoop and we take another little scoop and we mix, mix, mix and you get your orange paint. So I want you to make sure that you're filling all of your space. I've also gone and got some sponge. Use your peg. And you can make some different dabbers. Oh, that's a lovely texture. Lovely. Set that one to dry. One last one for me. This time I'm going to use complementary colours. So I've used cold colours and warm colours and now I'm going to use my complementaries. They're the colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel if you need to remind yourself. So this time I think I'm going to go for some big bold lines. and I might finish it off with some overlaying of colours. Now remember, when complementary colours go together, they make brown, so you're going to need to be careful when you're using your paint. I've also been and raided my toy box. So also, you can think about printing as well. Remember, printing means to create a repeat. I'm going to do some printing here. If you don't have these things at home, you, are, you can still do a lot of things with a paintbrush and some paint and your oil pastels. But if you do have things lying around at home, think of them as different paintbrushes. You can make a mark with anything you find in your house. I don't even know where this has come from. So think about it, what you would like your space to do. So here I'm just using a paintbrush to fill in all those gaps. We are making collage paper because next week I'm going to be letting you know what you're going to be do, doing with the materials that you're making. Now, make sure, oh I found some tissue here, I might even use some tissue. I'm hoping that everyone's got some of that at home. I can use my peg and it's really easy. We can dip in there make some really lovely colour combinations. Now, once you've finished all six pieces of paper, I'm going to show you what I'd like you to do next. So, have a lovely messy time making lots of marks, pattern, texture, shape, line and colour on all of your pieces of paper. Enjoy! Once all your materials have dried, you can add into them a little bit more if you wish. So for this one, I think I'm just gonna add just a little bit more. You don't have to, but also don't over egg it. Don't do too much. Also, if you have any fine liners or any other materials at home that you really desperately want to use, you can do that too. So I might decide that I might want to add in some extra details and I think what I might do here is add a complementary colour into some of my drawings here. 
but you can keep them as you would like or you can add into them however you want to. Now remember with your pastels they are there to be used, don't be too afraid of them. So you can take their wrappers off and you can add some more texture. Oh this definitely needs some more so I'm going to colour in some of those white gaps. And that is what I would like you to do this week. And then next week, we are gonna be using these to make a really, really awesome collage inspired by Eric Carle and also using the technique of Henry Matisse.